hello. A very warm welcome to everyone to this 1.1s session. My name is Els. And for those of you who join us for the first time, let me give you a little bit of a background. Several of us working for One Point Consulting are meditating on a regular basis. The meditation we practice is called Raicha Yoga. It's the yoga of the mind. And we find this practice very helpful in the workplace. We also have a silent room here in the office. So if people want to have a few minutes or 10 minutes of reflection in between project work, we'll come and sit in that silence room, which is really very nice. We started the Oneness Project in May 2020. And so far we have had more than 95 guest speakers from all over the world. They are experienced meditators and we ask them to share their thoughts about a particular topic, but also to guide us into a short meditation. We have recorded all these sessions and they are available on YouTube. Uh, for the first two years, we had regular weekly sessions on Fridays, 9 a.m. UK time, but we have moved those now to uh, fortnightly sessions. Today, I'm very, very pleased to welcome Golo Pilz, who joins us from Germany. Golo has been practicing and teaching Raicha Yoga meditation for many years, I think probably around 40 years now. Um, he is the founder of India Care, a charitable trust that supports uh, medical and scientific research in India. In 1990, Golo moved to India, where he oversaw a major solar energy project with financial support from the Indian and German governments. And of course, he's still involved in this project. He is also a founding member of the Environmental Initiative, and so far he has attended most, if not all, of the UN climate change conferences, not only as a participant, but also as a keynote speaker. So Gola, I'm very, very pleased that you can be with us today because I know you have a busy schedule and you travel a lot. And the topic for today is peace and hope in turbulent times. So over to you, uh, Golo. Yeah, Els, thank you very much. And one point for the, um, for the introduction and for the opportunity to talk today. And uh, indeed, uh, the topic is quite fitting, peace and hope in turbulent times. And uh, if you look around in the world, we can really see that the world is really in a turbulent transformation right now. We actually don't know where we should look and um, how we should position ourselves seeing all these rapid changes. I was just um, two weeks ago, I was in Stockholm at the UN conference, which was in commemoration of the stock, first Stockholm environmental conference almost 50 years ago. And interestingly, this conference was organized by Olof Palme. And the only prime minister, uh, head of state, which came at that time, 50 years ago, was Indira Gandhi. She came from India. She was then the prime minister of India. And she gave a very interesting speech. She said, uh, if we don't manage to live in harmony um, with nature, there won't be any future for all of us. And she said that 50 years ago. And uh, that was a very interesting speech because basically you could have taken the whole speech and even given it right away now. And uh, all the other speakers, which were sort of um, in the opening session of this Stockholm Plus 50 conference was Antonio Guterres, the um, Secretary General of United Nations. It was the Prime Minister of Sweden and uh, also the King was there. They all um, spoke about the serious situation of the world, um, in, especially in the area of environment and uh, biodiversity. And um, they lamented a little bit the situation that 50 years ago already, we, knowing, we were knowing about uh, the difficulties uh, which are lying ahead and we could identify the problems in the environment, in the climate and so on. And in these 50 years, sort of humanity was not able to address these issues and um, sort of find a solution. And um, they were bits, it was a bit sad undertone in all their speeches. 
And um, there were also a couple of scientific sessions, which I participated in one. And uh, there was a latest update on climate scenario. And you might have heard that the climate uh, now starts to go really out of harmony, um, it goes into extremes. And this is something which has been predicted already. Also 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it has been predicted. And right at the moment, um, we have horrible flooding in Australia. And um, I think Sydney is horribly flooded. And at the same time, uh, South Europe, uh, Italy is uh, declared emergency because the River Po almost runs empty and the River Po is responsible for um, all the agriculture um, in the Po area. So um, weather is, seems to be getting out of uh, sync, out of control. And the reason is that um, these jet streams, which are circulating around the globe, they have started to change their behavior. They have slowed down and they become more static. And that's why we get a high pressure system and the high pressure system doesn't move. So we get a drought period, a very long drought period. And it takes like two, three, four, five weeks until the rain comes, which was not the case in old days. So weather is changing at a high speed, but at the same time, we can also see that the, um, there's a rapid um, loss of biodiversity. We're losing insects, we're losing animal species, but we're also losing plants, the reefs. Um, suddenly they just disappear because partly due to climate change, but partly also because of pollution. So that is also happening right now, loss of biodiversity. And uh, thirdly, we can see that also the number of conflicts is increasing. So um, this is um, partly due to climate change that people losing their um, ways of agriculture, they lose their livelihood. And so they're migrating, especially in Europe. Europe's very attractive. We get a lot of refugees coming from Africa. And uh, in future, that numbers probably will increase. Right now, also, we have a big conflict going on. Um, interestingly, when we were in Stockholm, there was a big naval exercise going on and 40 warships have been in the harbor, in, in the little harbor of Stockholm, including an American aircraft carrier. And this was a little bit of a shocking sight also for all the delegates for this UN conference because all the money which was supposed to go for um, climate protection, climate change, protection of biodiversity, et cetera, et cetera, is now being shifted into the military sector. And um, conflicts are rising all over the world. Some of them are also due to changes of climate and so on. And uh, at the same time, we also can see now that uh, with incredible inflation, um, energy prices are going to the roof and um, commodities are also becoming more and more costly. In India, for example, because of climate change and drought in the spring, and a very hot spring, hottest spring on record, the harvest has been reduced by 30% almost, and Indian government has stopped any export of wheat. And uh, just imagine India is the second largest producer of wheat in the world. So basically what we can see is the whole world is in trouble. It is in a very fast transformation speed. And uh, through the news and through the internet, all these news are coming almost in real time to us. And uh, one has to be literally very careful um, how much news per day you actually read, how much you're, how long you're on the internet and uh, how, how detailed you want to be really informed about all this crisis because all this news, of course, they infect us on our mind. And a lot of people are um, worried about future. They're having fears. Um, they are losing courage. They lose hope. And uh, they're almost like traumatized. Especially young people, um, they have difficulties of projecting a sound future for them, a happy future for them, because they see this um, massive changes in climate and uh, all these other problems like conflicts, migration and so on and so on. And uh, even in the businesses, uh, situation has become extremely volatile and um, we have uh, supply shortages of critical 
components and uh, we have uh, sometimes disruption of our supply chains also and the situation became very 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 difficult in business also so all over we can say we have a planetary crisis but we have also a crisis of our civilization we had many times in the past crises and civilizational problems and on and so on but this time it's really on a global scale and through internet through travel and so on communication the world has become one this makes a, is, a, is a big difference to uh, the crisis which have been in the past but rather regional so now the big question is how to position how to deal with the situation and first of all it's extremely important that we stay positive amidst all these news because any company coach anybody tells you any doctor tells you when the patient comes stay hopeful stay positive because if you stay hopeful and if you stay positive you're much more prepared to draw into your inner strength to build up inner resilience and to mentally digest and face um, all these let's say problems these difficulties which are happening around us and these problems are so big, it's, um, it's uh, quite overwhelming because we don't know on a small scale, me personally, I, the person, what can I do seeing all these things? So there are actually two things uh, how we can respond to the crisis. One thing which is quite obvious, we can change our life. And um, we have, in, uh, we have uh, when I give presentations, I always talk about the five R's. This is uh, refuse all the trends, reduce your consumption, recycle, and um, I think I forgot the other, but basically the concept is quite clear. Reduce your consumption um, in terms of water, um, restrain yourself from buying all the time new things, so many things we don't really need. Uh, we don't have to follow all the fashion trends and so on and um, recycle as much as possible. Goods, don't throw them away, give them to others, and let us create the economy also of more sharing. Because it's quite clear that the planet has reached the planetary boundaries. There's also a, a system scientists are using um, where they describe the um, amount of resources which are available to the planet. And we have X amount of resources, X amount of population, we have one planet. So our economic model of unlimited growth doesn't really work out mathematically. It's quite clear. So we are reaching the boundaries of growth and we're reaching the planetary boundaries. So we have to adjust and change our lifestyle towards that. And um, here the West, the civilized uh, countries have a very high responsibility because um, historically also seen we in Europe and America, North America, Australia, Japan, we're responsible for 80% of the greenhouse gases, responsible to a great extent for climate change, responsible also for loss of biodiversity. It is our excessive consume. It's our life model, which we're following right now, which is causing havoc to mother nature. So we have to change lifestyle. And a big plus point here would be also, of course, to adopt um, a vegetarian lifestyle. Um, meat production is incredible, um, incredible load on the resources of uh, Mother Nature, water consumption, um, and so many other um, excess consumptions are there in the meat production, especially farming, uh, meat farming. And uh, so here is a big chance for all of us when we adopt a vegetarian or even a vegan lifestyle. We do a big contribution on a personal level to protect the planet and, uh, and help Mother Nature. But of course, there's also a second, more important um, approach and uh, change in my life. I can start a little bit, look within, within my own inner resources, within my mindset. Because we spurtle people, we believe that uh, what I think, so I act. So my mindset actually is the one which controls my action and also controls my emotions and my feelings. So I should look a little bit what I think the whole day, get I easily agitated um, and so on and so on. And I should apply some exercises to calm down, to reduce the frequency of thoughts and slowly, slowly 
see that I don't go too much in negative thoughts, which are like a loop. I go more into positive thoughts. So this is called the exercise of meditation, where I basically deal with positive thought patterns and I regular exercise them. And slowly, slowly, these positive thoughts, they're slowly, slowly replacing negative thought patterns. And science found out if I meditate regular, this um, sort of improves my social competence, my empathy. I love myself and I love nature and I love others. And what I love, I don't destroy. I take care of it. Secondly, uh, regular meditation also improves your health and gives strength and gives relaxation to you. And thirdly, and that's very, very important, when you meditate regular, it helps you to change habits and awareness. And we all have to change habits and we have to change our neuronal network, how we are used to think. Because how we used to think and subsequently used to act is no more appropriate. It's no more sustainable seeing the crisis of the world. So where to get hope and where to get peace? Hope and peace lies within regular meditation. In this regular meditation, you basically adopt positive thought patterns. I'm a powerful person. I'm a peaceful person. And you go within into your true self. And uh, in spiritual knowledge or in, in the spiritual world, there's one important um, concept which I would like to share with you. It's the concept, who am I? And uh, in spiritual world, we consider ourselves to be souls or spirits. And uh, we are residing in this body. So if you do this exercise and you go in this exercise that I'm a being of light, I'm a being of positivity in my original form, you create an incredible, powerful energy field and you create inner resilience and inner peace and inner strength. And this is what gives you hope. And this is what gives you also the strength to face the problems and to face the problems like climate change, loss of biodiversity, even war, even conflicts which are around you. And you become loving and detached. And all these things do not affect you emotionally and upset you or bring you in these negative loop thoughts which are there. And then when you go in this positive mindset, you become very happy, you become very loving, you become very peaceful. And this is a very, very solid foundation on which you can build on for the day-to-day -day work, for, to ex for interaction with your friends, with your relatives at the workplace and with the world outside there. And then something very beautiful happens if we meditate regular, we create a very powerful and positive energy field. And interestingly, science is telling us also that uh, we are all connected to the world outside there through our thoughts and emotion. Science has done a lot of research in the last 20, 30 years and they find out my thoughts they shape the world. And quantum physics goes a little bit in the similar direction. Our mind, the observer, is connected to the experiments which are happening outside there. So if we become a regular meditator, we sort of step by step change our thought pattern. We go out of the hopelessness, the negativity, the worries. We go into the positivity the love, the compassion, the strength. And then we start changing the energy field. We build up inner resilience and inner hope. And we bring transformation in our own personal life. But we also bring transformation then very practically to the world. We can send this positive, we can direct this positive energy field into areas of problem into areas of um, conflict, etc. In India, we have a very beautiful project called Yogic Farming. And we teach the, um, farmers all around uh, India, about 5,000 
meditation. And we told them to sort of um, meditate regular with the seeds and also with the field. And we worked with the agriculture university together and uh, they monitor over a period of five years, the outcome of that project. So we had a field with plants with meditation and a field with plants without meditation. And um, very interestingly, the um, result was very interestingly surprising. We got almost 30% um, better harvest in the area where we meditated regular. So what does it mean is meditation and thoughts, they do have a real impact into the world. So I hope in the shortness of time, I um, could um, highlight a little bit the, um, the concept of meditation and the benefits of meditation. And uh, I may have inspired you to look a bit more into your day-to-day -day life, especially in the morning when you get up. You can make it an easy routine for a couple of minutes. Uh, in the morning, you just uh, go into silence, you go into stillness, and uh, you concentrate within. And uh, I am a soul, I am a peaceful being. And you connect to the divine, the supreme being. This is another important concept in spirituality that we believe into the existence of a supreme, of a divine light, which is watching over us and sort of is the ocean of positive energies, love and compassion. And yoga is an old Sanskrit word and actually means connection. Interestingly, religion, Latin means to reconnect. So we're actually connecting to the divine to that divine where we have lost the connection through our journey through space and time. So meditation yoga is the connection to the divine and allow the divine light to come back into our day-to-day -day life and then become yourself a lighthouse and a mighthouse and start spreading these positive vibrations. So um, I hope I have uh, given you some inspiration and um, I would suggest that we do a short meditation and just do an exercise of uh, this, uh, what I have said before. And uh, so I would kindly request you to sit all relaxed and uh, relax yourself and Relax your shoulders, relax your stomach, and relax your whole body. Take a deep breath and set aside all the problems of the day. Set aside all the worries of the day. I am a being of light. And my true nature is peace and love. I am peace and love. I go into the depth of these qualities. Peace and love. This is my true nature. I'm now connecting to the divine, to the supreme being, who is the ocean of love and peace. I can feel slowly, slowly, peace and love coming in abundance to me. Love for the self, love for my friends and my relatives, and love for the whole world.
I am full of these qualities. And this is my true nature. I'm now focusing towards my family, towards my friends, and towards my working place. I send everybody love and peace. I send them my good wishes. I'm now focusing towards the world, towards the conflicts going all around me, the war which is happening nearby. I'm sending love and peace to all the politicians involved, to all the soldiers, to all the civilians in that region. May love and peace prevail. May you become aware of your true nature. May love and peace be established. I'm sending love and peace towards these regions. I'm now focusing towards nature. I'm aware about climate change, loss of biodiversity, and the cruelty towards the animals. I'm sending my love. I'm sending vibrations of beauty and harmony towards nature, towards the earth and the sky and the water and the air. Peace love and beauty. May you become whole. May you become beautiful again. May you become perfect again. I'm now visualizing the earth. I'm holding the earth in my hands. The earth is slowly turning. I can see all the problems and all the trouble, all the fast changes which are happening. And I understand I'm in a time of transformation. Transformation from an old world towards a beautiful new world. A world of beauty, a world of harmony, a world of happiness, a world of perfection and purity. This is my future world. And this is the world I like to live in. I'm sending the light towards the world in my hands. And I can visualize how the world is changing and becomes beautiful, becomes perfect. And I, I'm part of that. I'm living there. I have the power to bring change and I have the power to be a change maker to create a better place for all of us. I keep this picture in my mind 
And I keep this picture in my heart. This is my strength. This is my refuge. This is my power. The vision of a better world. I'm slowly coming back into this reality, but I keep that peace and love with me. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you so much, Golo. Uh, this was really a very nice, very peaceful meditation, but also um, what you have been sharing. And I've just taken a few notes for myself. And I really liked how you explained how meditation has an impact on the atmosphere, the energy, but also how it helps me to build that inner resilience, the impact it will have on my health. And also what I find very interesting, how you talked about these five R's, R's. I'm not sure whether I got all of them. Refuse, reduce, recycle, restrain from buying and resources, if these are the correct five ones. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really great. Um, but also, I think uh, that it's uh, very important to uh, realize that, and I do that myself, that sometimes we listen to too much of the negative news from the world and how it affects us, how it affects our mind. So also to be careful in how much we consume in a way the news via internet, etc., so really, it was really very nice. Thank you so, so much. And um, I hope myself that, that one day I can come again and join you in the retreat center in Germany. Um, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, and then also, um, for those who have been listening, um, just a reminder that the sessions are recorded, are available on YouTube. And then for the next 1.1 session, that will be Friday, 22nd of July, we have, an in, we have another international speaker, and that's going to be Maria Moreno, who will join us from Spain. And the topic she has chosen is the art of active listening and keeping a peaceful mind. Thank you also to the technical team, uh, and bye. I hope you have a nice day. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye, Golo.